Okay, first of all, I want everyone to, to look at each other and say, this is gonna be awesome, not awkward. This is gonna be awesome, not awkward. This is gonna be awesome, not awkward. <laughs> As you walk by, could you give me a dance move? Could you do? You guys, right here, Dan Harms, the best dancer I know, right there. Here's the deal. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Mother Mary, I ask you. Shh. Mother Mary, I ask you to be with us. I ask you to protect this room. I ask you to send the Holy Spirit to be with every heart. As we pray together as men and women, brothers and sisters in Christ, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Saint Joseph, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, here's the deal. Oh, cool, check out my clip. Don't I look good? Hey, shout out to the cool person that put this clip on my heel. Thank you. I found you. And it has your Instagram on it. Okay. All right. Sarah Swafford 18. We're friends. Good stuff. Here's the deal. Dating 101. I'm so glad Steubenville gave me four hours to give this talk. Um, that was a joke. Calm down. Everyone's like, oh gosh. I actually have 25 minutes and then I'm going to do Q&A. Yes? Does that sound good? Yeah? So when I said four hours, it was a joke because it, it would take me four hours to want to tell you everything I would want to tell you about dating 101. Because does anyone else agree that this whole like relationship thing is kind of messy? Is it complicated? It's complicated, right? So here's the deal. I want to thank every guy that came to this talk. Every girl that I saw today, I was like, could you please bring a guy? Thank you. It's not a date to my talk, right? But thank you. Because here's the deal, like a lot of times people are like, oh, relationships, good, so you speak to the women. It's like, oh, I would rather have time to hang out with the men, yes? Like, I love the ladies, but ladies, right? Like, we need someone to date if we're called to marriage, yes? Yes? Okay, so here's the deal. I used to give these talks, I would like give talks to the women, and guys would come up to me and be like, so like, what'd you say? Like, I need you to tell me what you said, right? Like, and then the girls, would, I would give talks to like men only, and the girls would be like, how much could I pay you to sit in the back and hide and hear what you said to the men, right? So I got really smart, and I decided to just start giving the talk with both of you together, right? Because I hold the hand of the men, and I hold the hand of the women, and I have a conversation that you would rather eat your arm off than have, yes? I'm gonna say some things in this talk that are probably gonna be things you wish you could say to someone, but it's kind of awkward, right? or it's a little complicated, or it will make things complicated if you say it, yes? So I wanna start this talk off by like throwing a bone to, to the men. Thank you for coming. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings is my favorite restaurant and I have my own fantasy football team, so just so you know. I know, I have all brothers, I married a linebacker. I'm here for you, right, I got you. So here's the deal, men. I'm gonna take you on a little trip, like, in, like a little inside look into the heart and mind of a woman, okay? So when you sit there and go, what the heck is going on with that? This might be a little look into that, right? So I'm gonna take you on a little trip. All, so, so sit back, fellas, like take this in. You might learn something. All the girls out there are like, she's gonna do that in 20 minutes, buckle up, right? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so I call it, this little look into the heart and mind of a woman, I call it the typical Friday night, right, ladies? You like, it's, you got all your best girls in the house. It's like chick flick movie marathon sweats, right? Like, you're just gonna escape reality for like seven hours. You have a box of Little Debbies. I mean, both boxes of Little Debbies. We do not share, right? And it's just like game on. And you like turn on the first movie and you're like, oh, why do we not do this every night? This is the best, right? And then you like turn on the second movie and you look at each other and you're like, well, my life is officially worthless, right? Like, let's do it again, right? So you throw on the third movie. It's like two in the morning and the whole room's just like completely quiet, right? 
and you all look at each other and then finally one of you stands up and picks up your remote control and like chucks it against the wall and you're like, when's it gonna be my turn? I'm so sick and tired of waiting for Mr. Right, Mr. Perfect to come into my life. I need a cute guy and a horse and a sunset right now, right? And you vent about him and him and him and this and this and this and you fall asleep bitter and frustrated and completely out of oatmeal cream pies but you're like, it's gonna be okay, right? Like I can get through this, right? But you go through the weekend and you're like, ugh, and you're like scrolling on your phone and it's like babies and engagements and you're like, I'm gonna burn my phone, right? Like, and you just get to Monday or whatever, right? And you get to school or work or wherever here and you're just like, you see this guy, you're like halfway attracted to and he's like, hey. And you're like, hey, I want you, right? Right? So what do you do? Well, naturally you start All the fellows in the house, look at me. Awkward giggling means it's true every time, right? This whole front row was like, ah! oh my gosh. Mental stalking, what is it, right? Ladies, all the guys are like, I don't even have a definition and I'm kind of creeped out, right? Mental stalking is where they think about like where you're gonna take them on their first date and like where you're gonna propose and they do this like Christmas card test where they take like your first, your, their first name and your last name and like every baby name you've ever loved because you can't be too careful, right? It's mental stalking. All the, all the guys in the audience are like, nope, never done that, right? Like, creepy, right? And then you move to what? Social media stalking, right? You jump on and look at like a thousand pictures of him and his uncle Bill on their fishing trip and you see a picture of his dog and you're like, that's oh, the cutest golden retriever I've ever seen in my entire life, right? And you're just like scrolling and you're like, he was the sweetest little third grader, right? You're like, wow, have I been here for four hours? I've been here for four hours, right? Like, and then you see a picture of him with his arm around a girl and you're like, oh, that better be his sister. <laughs> right? It's real. Then you move to flirting, right? And then you start texting, Snapchat. Did you guys hear how like the whole room was like, wah, wah. did you hear it was like, <laughs> right? Texting, Snapchat, show me good for relationships, bad for relationships. What do you think? Texting, Snapchat. Okay. <laughs> All the junior high kids are like, it's been the best two weeks of my life, lady, back away from my phone, right? <laughs> Don't touch my phone. High schoolers are typically like, eh, I don't know, I don't know. College students are like, let's just let it die, right? How many of you guys have ever been misinterpreted by a text, in a text, right? Or in Snap, right? How many of you have ever been hurt by a text or Snap, right? How many of you wish that Apple would fig figure out how to put like a cancel button on the phone? Your Apple, figure it out, right? I think they just like drama, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna leave next, the whole like Snapchat and texting where it's at. We're gonna go to calling and FaceTime. I had to leave, I had to put FaceTime on there because nobody calls each other. It's the green button on the phone, right? Like nobody calls people anymore, right? I can, I can tell you how old I am. So when I was in high school, the phone came off the wall and it became cordless. And you can, yeah. And you could put your boyfriend on speakerphone and like lay the phone on the pillow and talk to him like he's there. Okay, good, moving on. And then physically stalking. It's like, oh my, that escalated quickly. Okay, good. Everybody's like, whoa. I call this lovingly the emoto coaster. And the reason why I call this the emoto coaster is you guys have all been to like an amusement park, like, you know, Six Flags, something fun. Okay. So you know that, that like feeling of you're waiting in line for the ride and you're just like waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you can smell the asphalt like burning through your flip flops. Right. And you're just like waiting and you're watching everyone else ride the ride and you're like, no, truly, I'm so happy for you move along, right? And then finally you get, to the, you get to the ride, you get to the front and you strap in and you're like, yes. And it's like ching, 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 ching up the mountain and you're like, yes. And then you get to the top and it just throws you down and your stomach comes up and your head's like doo 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 doo, -doo right? Tears streaming down your face. If you're a female, you have a permanent hole in the back of your head where your earring was like digging into your neck, right? Okay, so like crazy ride. And then all of a sudden it just comes to this grinding halt and you take one step off the ride and you throw up in front of everyone. And you spend the rest of the day under the shady tree in the trash can that they provide for you, wondering why that was truly so epic. Yes? Show me. Like, mental stalking, social media stalking, flirting, texting, Snapchat calling, FaceTime, physically stalking. 
The, the Emoto coaster can, it can move over five days, it can move over five weeks, five months, five years is a long time, but this thing moves. Raise your hand if you've ever watched a friend ride the Emoto coaster with someone, yes? Keep your hand up if you are that friend. Good, no, I'm just kidding, okay. So like we know what it is, we see it in our lives. We just don't usually put it on a screen, yeah? Okay, here, here's the deal, guys. Sarah Swafford, not a hater. Everything on that screen is going to be a part of a relationship in some way, right? Some guy or girl is gonna walk by and you're gonna be like, potential. That, there is potential right there, right? Like you are gonna have things in your life. I'm not a hater. I have almost 30,000 Instagram followers. I love Instagram, love it. I'm not a hater, but could there be some potential traps? Are y'all visual learners? I'm a visual learner, yes? I call this the potential trap slide because I feel like it's easier to see it, yeah? Not a hater, but I have like, I have, like this caution, this like, I don't know, man. The world's idea perfect puts a lot of pressure on you and it spins people onto the emoto coaster, right? And then typically right onto the cycle of use. And so I have a potential trap slide and this is what it looks like. Mental stalking, it's a one-way relationship. You're building the unknown. Expectations can be too high and it can be creepy. Social media stalking, you're getting into someone's personal life and making assumptions. Wouldn't you rather let that person tell you about himself or herself? Flirting, you may be seeking attention or feeling an insecurity or sending mixed messages and it can come across as fake. Don't you want them to get to know the real you? Texting or Snapchat, it can be intimate, misinterpreted, you can rationalize things as no big deal and it can be addictive. Calling or FaceTime, you may stay up late and reveal a lot about yourself and calling and texting and Snapchat and FaceTime can all be very private. And then physically stalking, not just like the puppy dog following someone around, but like you have to be around them. You don't have any fun without them. You do things just because they do. You may change who you are to please them and start going to things just because they're there. It's easy to wrap yourself up in something for the wrong reasons. That last one's hard for me to read because that was like just straight from the playbook from high school for me. I was whoever the person I either wanted to date or was dating needed or wanted me to be. It's that easy. It's that easy. And I told you last night, I didn't have a phone in high school and I was a hot mess. I don't know what life would have looked like for me with a phone. And I stand on this stage and I told you, I, I'm here to fight for you because everything I just talked about is messy, but it's also beautiful. Like I, you know, when I was in college, this all started to spin for me, especially calling out the cycle of use. Ready? Repeat after me. I will not use you. And I will not let you use me. When I started calling that out, when I started seeing all of this come together, it's something in my heart started to shift. And it was a, it was a hard, long process because I had really had a lot of practice at doing it the way that I just showed, like all of this, right? And then I was taking a class one day with Dr. Ted Shree one of my mentors, and he threw these notes on the board and changed my life. He said, virtue is striving for human excellence. Virtue is forming the habits of knowing and choosing the good and right thing to do. Virtue harnesses and trains your passions and emotions to work towards the good, and virtue gives you the freedom to love. He wrote these notes on the board. I was like a freshman in college, and I remember just looking at, looking at this board and saying like, I don't know what virtue is, like I couldn't define it for you, but like that is what I want. And I know that we've been breaking open a lot last night and today. And I know that some of you look at this and look at me and look at all of it and be like, yeah, but like, what is it? What does it look like? Virtue's like locked in a vault with Jane Austen and we need to free it, right? Like it's this beautiful word that did like true work in my heart. And then I ran into this quote, Love is not primarily a feeling, though it may be accompanied by feeling. That's the confusion of our time. Confusing love's feeling with love itself. Love actually is a great act of the will. It's when I say, I desire your good, not for my sake, but for yours. Father Bob, one of my other mentors, Bishop Barron, I come to you saying like this slide right here, you guys, this is straight up truth. This is straight up beauty. St. Thomas Aquinas, St. John Paul the Great, Fulton Sheen, all my homeboys, right? Like they all say like, this is love. The world says love is the complete opposite. I'm here to like change your idea of what love is. Read it again. 
Look, it's not primarily a feeling, though it can be accompanied by feeling, heck yes, right? It's confused. I remember reading this, it's like, I desire your good, not for my sake, but for yours. Hold up, wait, like, why would I do something that's like not good for me and only me? Love isn't just like this fluffy clouds that I fall into. It's not just this like warm, fuzzy feeling where it's like, I got this and I, I'm just gonna hold on to it and I'm gonna do anything I can to never lose it again. Like grasping, desperate, right? I'm in love, I can't fall out of love. Why do people stay with people that aren't good for them? I mean, we're gonna get to the question and answer. I could just lay out a ton of questions for you right now, right? We could go through, I mean, when I told you I needed four hours, I meant it because this, is not what you hear every day, but this is truth. How many of you guys ever feel like you know everything you're not supposed to do? You know all the no's, you're like check, check, check. Like I know what's hurt me, I know what I don't want for my life, right? Like I can give you all the answers, Sarah, but I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what to do and say yes to. Do you guys ever feel that way? I felt that way all the time in high school. I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. What the heck am I supposed to be saying yes to? When I was in college, we got really bold one night. A bunch of us girlfriends, a bunch of my girlfriends and I got together and we were like, let's do it. So we walked up to the, a group of our guy friends and we, we looked at them and we were like, what do you want? Like, what are you looking for? Like, what's the most attractive thing about a woman? Like, tell us, because we're like exhausted trying to figure it out, right? And they got into a man huddle. Have you guys all seen a man huddle? Right, where like guys get together and like put their arms around each other, shoulders, and they sway back and forth like this and there's typically grunting, right, yeah? There is this group right here, this red group right here. They were having one over here earlier, right? Like, it's very, mo it's very manly, right? So they got into this man huddle, and, and they were over there for like 10 minutes, and all those girls were like, dang, they're like really talking about this. Like, this is awesome. And they break huddle, and all like John Wayne style, they're like, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. And they like strut over to us, and we were like, yeah, give it to us. Most attractive thing about a woman, let's go. And they looked at us and they said, holiness and confidence. And we were like, I'm sorry, come again? And they said, holiness and confidence. They said even girls who, or even guys, like their friends or guys that like, aren't into their faith would say they want a girl who like knows who she is and does the right thing. Like holiness and confidence. And we just looked at those guys and it was the most awkward exit of a building of all time. We just left. We were like, wow, so good, so deep. Thank you, wow. Thank you. Awesome, man. And we just left. And I remember we went back to my apartment and one of my girlfriends like threw a coat on the ground. She's like, why'd we even ask? We asked. We don't even know what the heck that means, right? Just go be holy and confident. Watch me frolic. Here I go, right? Like, I got nothing. So we went back to them, right? And we're like, hey, hi. Uh, we're gonna need some like practical tips and tools to like execute this because we have no idea what you're talking about, right? And so the guy sat down and they busted out a napkin and they started writing down these like attributes, characteristics, like traits, virtues of this girl, you know? And they're like writing it down. We're like, ooh, that is so good. Keep doing that, right? So we busted out, you know, over in our group. We're like generous women. We're gonna make the simply irresistible virtue, you know, we called it the simply irresistible virtuous man list, right? So we started making that list. And then we got together with the, the guys and we presented these lists to each other. It was the most fantastic conversation and night that I had in college. It was phenomenal. The guys presented theirs on a napkin. We had ours in Excel, color-coded, because men and women are different, yes? <laughs> Created equal in dignity, but different, yes. Complimentary, yes, right? And we presented these lists, and it changed the way. I mean, I, we all just kind of were like, dang, we thought we just had to like lose 10, pair, 10 pounds and dye our hair. Like, what is this, right? But we came to the table, and we had a really beautiful, honest conversation. And so I started asking other people, I'm like, what do you think should be on this list? Like, you know, we started compiling them. So I asked men of all different ages, like, what do you think should be on this list? I asked women, what do you think should be on this list? And so I brought them with me. This is, uh, ladies first, right? Ladies, this is what the men wrote for the women. She's gentle and kind, graceful and sincere, patient and flexible, doesn't gossip, isn't rude, tries to eliminate drama, not create it, poised and modest, open to the needs of others, nurturing and welcoming, joyful and fun. She stands up for what is right and seeks the truth. She has courage and is not afraid to confront and help someone. She's genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. She speaks with conviction. She's responsible, prudent, humble, and honest. She's secure. She's sensitive to the needs of others. Her relationship with God comes first in her life. She puts others first before herself. 
She strives for excellence in all things and chastity and sobriety and tries her hardest in academics or her career. She's not led solely by her emotions and passions. She maintains balance and order in her life. She lives a life of charity and service. She's forgiving, trustworthy, loyal, and pure. All the ladies in the house, take a deep breath in. Let it out. Repeat after me, ladies. Striving. Striving. Not perfect, because perfect doesn't exist. Striving. Deep breath in. And let it out, good. Fellas, I just had to take the women through intensive breathing treatments because this just completely wrecked their life, okay? <laughs> women don't look at like, you know, this and go like, oh my gosh, I wanna be her. They look at lists like this and they're like, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that. I messed that up at lunch. I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that. I just need a nap and a box of Oreos. Thank you, good night, right, okay. <laughs> ladies, striving, not perfect. Yes, ladies, okay. Ooh. There's, you guys, there is not a woman walking the earth that is perfectly all these things. Guy, her name's Mary, Mama Mary. St. Joseph won the lucky ticket. Sorry, fellas, you're left with the rest of us striving fools, right? Okay, so here's the deal. There's no, like, there's no perfect lady, so just like, take that pressure and put it down. Guys tell me all the time, you, you know what's crazy about that list? It's not like that list, what's actually attractive about her is her act of striving for it. Like her striving for it is what's attractive. Can you ladies put that somewhere deep in your heart? Yes. Ladies, do you wanna see the simply irresistible virtuous man? All the girls are always like, put up the list. All the guys are always like, or not. Is this gonna be painful, right? Like, <laughs> fellas, I'm with you. Asian zings, chicken wings, we're together, okay? Here we go. This is what the women said for the men. He is a leader, provider, protector, initiator, chivalrous, brave and courageous, gentle and respectful, intuitive and patient, joyful and fun. He stands up for what is right and seeks the truth. He has courage and is not afraid to confront and help someone. He's genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. He speaks with conviction. He's responsible, prudent, humble and honest. He's secure. He's sensitive to the needs of others. His relationship with God comes first in his life. He puts others first before himself. He strives for excellence in all things and chastity and sobriety and tries his hardest in academics or his career. He's not led solely by his emotions or passions. He maintains balance and order in his life. He lives a life of charity and service. He's forgiving, trustworthy, loyal, and pure. All the fellows in the house just shrug, shrug your shoulders and be like, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. Right, like I'm all right. I won't make you deep breathe, but like just, it's all right. Fellows, repeat after me, striving. Striving, not perfect, because perfect doesn't exist. Striving. All the ladies in the house are like, it's just attractive them saying it. My gosh, right? Like, wow. <laughs> Striving, what a word. Okay. Ladies, it's just as important for you to hear them say striving as it is for them to say it. They just found out about the list like two seconds ago. Give them a chance, yes? <laughs> Fellas in the house, I bet you have not seen this, right? Like, some of the guys always come to you like, what, like, well, I'm not, I don't say anything and I'm wrong, but like, what am I supposed to be doing, right? Like, this is what the women wrote for you. You guys, did you notice how the two lists, um, they're the same, did you guys see that, right? Do we share humanity? Yeah. We're a little different, but we complement each other beautifully. I have guys come up to me all the time after my talks and they're like, hey Sarah, can we talk to you for a minute? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, over there? I'm like, oh, over here? Yeah, okay, great. So it's like me and like, five guys, right? And they're always like, um, two quick questions, Sarah. Like, uh, you know the, the list thing? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you sure that's what the girls want? And I'm like, yeah, like 10 years of the list, like, woo, 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 right? And they're like, oh, okay, good, good, good. Are you sure that's what the girls want? I'm like, yeah. And they always look at me with like pain in their eyes and they're like, then why do women throw themselves half naked at the complete opposite? I knew it was coming, right? And I look at those guys and all the guys here that are like, preach, right? Like all these guys that are in this room and I look at them with love in my eyes and I look at them and I say, that's a four hour answer but I can boil it down to one word and that one word is woundedness because we're wounded, because we haven't been loved the way that we need to be loved or should be loved. Insert my talk last night, yes? 
That is why. And I stand before you on a stage saying, dating 101, like, let's go team, right? Like, I want you, if you're called to marriage, to see these lists and say, that's the kind of wife, that's the kind of husband that I wanna be. That's the kind of mother and father that I wanna be if I'm called to this. You are so wrapped up. I think high school is just so, it's so hard. Did you guys notice how nothing on that list up there has anything to do, not a thing to do with the way you look or the size you are or what you can bench, nothing. It has nothing to do with the way you look. This is a timeless, classy, spiritual, beautiful list that will last you your whole life. This is my list that I strive for. This is it, this is the whole game. Ladies, is it hard to be a woman? And not just me, good, okay. So I'm gonna have you take the Sarah Swafford pledge, you ready? All the ladies, raise your right hand. I promise you, Sarah. From this day forward, I will not make life harder on another woman. Amen. Now look at the women around you and say, I mean it. I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. <laughs> Fellas in the house, is it hard to be a man? <laughs> Y'all are like, no. Is it hard to be the simply irresistible virtuous man? Yes. Fellows in the house, raise your right hand. I promise you, Sarah, from this day forward, I will not make life hard on another guy. Amen. Now look at the men around you and say, I love you, man. You're beautiful. I love your hair. You look amazing. Yes. Everyone in the house, here we go. Raise your right hand. I promise you, Sarah, from this day forward, I will not make life Harder. Harder, on the opposite sex. The opposite. Amen. Amen. Now look at the opposite sex around you and say, I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. Okay, here's the deal. Bring it home, right here. Last thing I'm gonna tell you. Look at me, look at me, look at me, right here, right here, right here. Ladies, I need you to find your tribe, your squad, get a hashtag, get a t-shirt, but you need to get together and you need to run with this group of women after this, yes? Fellas in the house, I'm going to be really honest with you. I need your help. I need your help. I stand in lines for hours and lines and lines of women and they look at me and they're like, where are the, like, who am I going to marry? Where are the men going to come from? And I look at them and I say, Steubenville, main campus too, yes? <laughs> I look at them and I say, they're here, yes? Fellas, look at me, look at me, fellas. There is a huge difference. I, I, need you to, I need you to pull together in brotherhood like never before. I need you guys to get together and say, Shh, her talk's legit, the list is legit, let's run. I need one of you to be bold and to stand up and be like, let's do this. And then five guys will stand up and be like, I'm with you, I just didn't wanna say it first, right? I need you to do this for me. Fellas in the house, take this party to your small group. Make it happen. Look at me. There is a huge difference between a bro and a brother. A bro is someone you party with. A brother is someone you invest in. And I need you to invest in each other, the brothers in this house. Because I need you to run together and bring each other closer to our Lord and grow in virtue. And then I need you to look at the ladies who are in this little group going, could someone ask me to bowling and a pizza, please? And I need you to take that group and I need you to invite the women and I need you guys to run together towards our Lord, yes? Yes. Here we go. I want you to learn to be friends with the opposite sex before you date anybody, yes? I promise you those relationships that you have are gonna bring you closer to each other, teach you about yourself, teach you how to be friends with the opposite sex, to look across and see your brother in Christ or your sister in Christ and love them. I love you, not for my own sake, but for yours because you are beautiful and you are worthy. And the men in, the, in this house, you are beautiful and you are worthy. And I'm gonna show you that through friendship. And then if God calls us to date, then we're gonna build that on this, yes? Yes. Sorry, I just got really fired up. Dan Harms, come, let's do, let's do Q&A, yes? Let's do it. All right, so here's the deal. Dan, you have a coffee cup. Yeah. You are so adorable. It's coffee okay. chat. Coffee talk. Coffee talk. Are you guys okay if we do this? Hey, yeah? let's make some noise for Sarah. This has been amazing. <laughs> I'm a 
I got a, I got a little passion in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, these are really hard questions, so I'm just going to ask you them all. I'm just kidding. Um, are you guys ready? How do you know when you need to break up with someone, and how do you break up with them when you know it's time? That here's, is, why, did, here's I, a, why here's, did I choose that first after this? Whew. Here's the, here's the thing that I love, because having been a teen sitting in an audience and uh, I was this kid, there are some of you in here right now whose hearts are going, because you're like, oh no, this is, they're talking to me. Um, here's, here's, here's one of the biggest red flags, and this, this maybe goes a little extreme. There's lots of different reasons to break up with somebody, but here is a really important, profound one, is that if you have somebody in your life that you are dating who is pulling you away from your congregation. It was pulling you away from your friends, away from your family. It was isolating you. You are shutting other people out to the exclusion so that you can be with this person. That is a sick and unhealthy dynamic. That is an immediate, immediate red flag. That's... I want to speak in this moment to everyone who's sitting next to their boyfriend or girlfriend. I always tell people, hey, no, mad love for you right now. Mad love for you. I know there's couples in here. I know that there's people who are dating. I know there are people who have boyfriends or girlfriends at home. And I just want you to hear me say that I know that taking all this in is hard. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and answer another one, right? Which is, what do you do if you haven't saved yourself or you want to start over and live chastity and live this out? I'm just going to combine those two together. My heart speaks to your heart right now because there's a lot of couples in here that are like, she just threw down on that stage virtue and love and the cycle of use just got an answer of what do I do instead? And I know that that is a lot to take in right now, but I would be lying to you if I didn't say that with all of my heart, I believe that this is the way to find your spouse and to live out dating and engagement. I mean, I, again, I wrote a whole book on it because I'm so passionate about it and I want to be able to go to coffee with you and give you the four hour answer. And I just would rather, I just, I wrote the book so I could do that. But in that book, there are a couple lines in there that are speaking from my heart. And that really, truly, like if you, if you saw those lists up there with the virtue and you're like, man, how do I explain this to my significant other? Praise God if they are here because you guys can go have an, a beautiful conversation about your relationship right now. It doesn't mean that you just immediately break up with someone. But my heart wants you to have that conversation with them called, do we bring each other closer to God? Do, do, I, do you bring out the best in me? Do you will my good above yours? Shoot, let's get very real right now, okay? If you really, like if you think you're in love and you want to be with this person, but you're having sex or doing everything and you know, all of that, the question really truly is, and this is hard to hear, but if, if you're able to step back and say like, no, like I don't wanna use you anymore, even though like we know we love each other and all that, you know, all the stuff that you say, if there's no ring, there's no vow and there's no commitment and you don't know for sure that that person's gonna be your spouse. And I want you to, I, like it, with my heart, I want you to hear me say that because you don't know. And I, I come to you and say that out of love. And if you guys, if you have already slept together or you're not a virgin or you're sitting there going, I, like this is all way new to me, Sarah. Come into my heart right now and let me hear, then let me tell you that like today is day one for you and your relationship. I mean, I'm, I'll beg you to go to confession tonight and just give all of that to Jesus. You are never too far gone. You are never damaged goods. Even if your virginity was taken away from you, like this is you day one. And I want you to take that into tonight into adoration because it's never too late to start over. And I want you to take this talk and your friends and your significant other, and I want you to be real with it. I want you, and so if it's like, oh shoot, Sarah, my boyfriend does not bring me closer to God and we are doing all of this and I, at the, in this moment, I am so overwhelmed. Or the guys that are feeling like, shoot. Like this is beautiful. This is just a day where you get to start that conversation and then you get to watch and see how they react to what you're saying. Because if you're convicted in it and you want it and they don't, you have your answer for the breakup question. Amen? Yeah. Yes. Well, amen. Uh, I would say too, one of the things about breaking up is that any time that I've been through that experience, for the most part, was, uh, was built around the fact that like, look, I want what is best for you and I want what is best for, for 
both of us, like our, our, our future lives, our future spouses, our future, whatever, whatever our life holds in store for us, the best thing for that is for us to either change certain behaviors or B, it's not for us to be together. Right, like I, what's best for you is not to be with me. And, and that's not because I don't wanna be with you. Like you're great and you're super fun, but like this is just not right. And the moment that you figure out that that is not right, that is the moment when you need to go ahead and, and execute. Go ahead and just have that conversation with them, not to hurt them, not to be mean to them, but just for what's good for them and good for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to frame the, the breakup conversation. Hard, sure, but you gotta do it. You're becoming an adult, do it. Amen. Very hard though, very hard. Can you date a non-Catholic or someone that isn't into their faith? Yeah, here's, yes, yes, you can. Um, don't date projects. Like, don't yes. date somebody oh, dear thinking God, like, yes. oh, I can fix that. Oh, just let me fix. Yes, yes. That yeah. happens on both sides. Don't that date potential. Date, <laughs> don't date projects. Date someone that's going to take you to heaven. Date someone that's going to run ahead of you and be like, let's go. Don't drag anybody to heaven with you if you're gonna date them. Don't be like, no, seriously, let's go. Let's go, let's go. No, run side by side together. You want someone that's running with you. Are you gonna have times where maybe you're doing better in your faith than they are and you need to like support them? Yes, but please don't drag projects around, yes? Everyone nod your head up and down and be like, I'm, I'm picking up what you're throwing down. Yes, okay. And, and acknowledge, acknowledge the fact that ultimately like you're dating in order to, to ultimately discern and, and lead to a sacrament, right? Yes. And uh, the point of, of marriage, like your job as a married person, my job with my wife and her vow to me, my vow to her is to get her to heaven. That's my job. Yep. And you cannot, you, it's, it's profoundly, profoundly difficult and it's a trail that is marked with lots of tears if the other person has no interest in getting you to heaven or being there themselves. Amen? So like that's the ultimate goal is you are there to sacrifice yourself and to love them and to help them get to heaven and they you. And yes. so if that's just really a non-starter from the get-go, right. then... It's tough. Last thing, we're gonna answer these fast so that we can get to more of them, but I really, like, I know... It, you, yes, you can marry a non-Catholic. Yes, you can marry someone that's maybe not into their faith, but I think I know Dan and I and Katie and... Bob and everybody, like everybody on staff will tell you that the greatest thing about their marriage, like the greatest gift of my marriage is our shared Catholic faith. I, I mean, and it's not that I, it's not that you can't marry a non-Catholic, but I just like the richness of that. Like, I can't even tell you what comes along with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, okay. and, that's, and that's the beautiful thing too about intimacy, right? Yeah. There is intimacy in praying with someone. I don't know how you feel about inter like praying together as a couple. We pray together all the time. But or as in a dating situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the I intimacy of praying with your spouse is, is as intimate as, as sexual experiences. Yeah. I mean, it's profound. For sure. Um, dating or praying while dating. I get a lot of people, this actually flows right really well into this next question. Um, what is emotional chastity? <laughs> what is emotional virtue? Anybody ever wondered that? All the guys are in here like, it's like with mental stalking. What the heck what? are we talking about? Um, I wrote, when I wrote my book, it was because there was a lot of conversation going on about emotional chastity. And I actually don't like the phrase emotional chastity because what you hear is chastity equals abstinence. Like chastity is not having sex. So everyone's like, oh, so you mean emotional abstinence? Like I shouldn't have emotions and I shouldn't feel. I'm like, eh, wrong. Like time out, that's not at all what we're talking about. Um, virtue is by definition the habitual disposition to do good emotional virtue is having your emotions in right order. Amen? Um, so the whole idea, this whole conversation, you know, of can you pray together in a, in a dating relationship? I'm like, yeah, go on a walking rosary, go to mass together, go to adoration together, even pray over, you know, pray over each other. Be like, man, I bring peace to my girlfriend's heart right now. You know, like that's good stuff, right? What I don't want you to do is some people will get together and pray and they, and they get, they like pour out their soul through prayer in a very like spiritual way to their boyfriend of two weeks. And what happens when he takes that knowledge of your soul and dumps you and runs off with it or uses it against you in a fight or against you in a breakup? It really depends on like how long you've been together and where you're at in your relationship. If you're engaged, like, yeah, pray together, like things like that. But I get, when I started doing ministry, I was, I was with a bunch of college students and I started seeing that they were like, okay, yeah, like don't sleep together, but there's a whole nother game that plays before that, amen? And emotional virtue is where it was at, which is like, 
how do I get, you know, it, my favorite way to define it, if I'm on an airplane and people ask me what I do for a living, I'm like, six hours later, I'm like, here we go. But when I tell them, I wrote a book on emotional virtue, they're like, what the heck is that? And it was like, really, it's, it's looking at your heart, looking at your, your emotions, looking at who you are and saying, I'm gonna rise above my emotional spontaneous reaction in this moment and choose the good, the true and the beautiful for me and my beloved. So what does that look like in a relationship, right? It looks like this, like you two are together, right? Like you're about to make a poor life choice, like my friend last night, right? And you look at each other and you rise above that spontaneous emotional reaction in the moment of what you want to do. And you say, I'm gonna choose the true, the good and the beautiful for your heart right now. I'm gonna walk away. When Swaf and I were engaged, it gets really hard when you're engaged because you're like, we're engaged, right? Like chastity doesn't get easier as you keep going. Chastity is the greatest gift to love. It's the, it protects love. So we came up with a code word. So we would basically like, like if something was going on and you know, a couple rules for chastity, how far is too far, all these questions, right? Like I know you have them. Like I wish we had tons of time, right? But you should never rev someone's engine only to turn it off. You should never try to turn someone on. Like, wh why would you be trying to turn them on if you're not married, right? Because if you're just teasing, you're just tempting, you're just flirting, it's not love, it's use. So to be able to like look at yourself and look at your heart and be like, I don't wanna use you. I don't wanna rev your engine to turn it off. I'm not gonna mess with you emotionally by playing mind games or heart games with your heart. Like, I'm not gonna do that to you because that's not fair to you. That's not love. That's not loving you well. And I, yeah. And I think, I think, yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. I think now, now more than ever, because so much communication happens over text. Yes. Right? Oh. So, much, so much communication happens in these little bursts of things where you're not physically present with the person. It is so easy oh. to string someone along and like kind of bait them into a very like seemingly vulnerable, emotionally, you know, just kind of uh, vulnerable conversation yep. that is quite a bit farther than you, anybody needs to be. Yeah. And it's because you have this facade, this block between you, right, of, of digital space. Right. Um, if you can't have those conversations, you can't have that, that growth in your relationship in person, uh, then, then you needn't be having it over digital platforms. Right. It's, it's messy, right? Uh, texting entered in a whole new ball game for everything. Girls come up to me all the time. They're like, yeah, we've been like talking, texting, hanging out for like six months. And then when we're in person, he like acts like he doesn't know me. I'm like, really? Yeah. This yeah. Is, this is why I wrote the book, to be totally honest. I was watching all of this and I have guys come to me all the time, right? And they're just like, same thing. And so when I wrote, like what I say emotional virtue, it's like, man, there's so much going on. Like how far is too far? All the sexual side, like it's all there, but there's a lot that's going on before that. And so like I come to you and I just say like, look, if you want to play the game well, right? Look at the virtue list, right? But then whenever you start to date someone, people tell me that all the time. So like my, our rules, Swaf and I, like we, we both, like we were the first people we dated after our conversions. So after our day ones, this was our first relationship. And he looked at me one time, he just looked at me and he's just like, I want this to be so radically different than any other person I've ever dated. And so we made two rules. We made, we made the rule like we weren't gonna make out and we weren't gonna lay down together. Those were the two rules that we made to safeguard our relationship. And I happily tell you that the first time we ever made love or ever slept in the same bed or anything was our wedding night. And it is so worth the wait, you guys. I just come to you to tell you that. And I know a lot of the guys, like I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are like, why are we clapping for this, right? Like I, like, I, like she's crazy, you know? Like, and, and I come to you saying, you know, a lot of you are sitting there going, well, what can we do, right? Like if we, if that's like, we can't do those two things. It's like, if you're dating someone right now and you remove the sexual aspect and you can't stay together, please break up. You, your marriage will fall the freaking heck apart if you are getting to, if you're marrying. Okay, again, Love, you guys, love is made to bind you together to your spouse, like that is what it's for. It's the blinders that says, you know what? Like, this is gonna bring us together for life. Why do people stay with people who abuse them, who beat them, who are bad for them? When I have girls and guys come up to me asking for advice on that, I mean, my question back is, are they sleeping together? 
Because if they are, then that's the blinding, binding force that's totally blinding them to everything that's going on. Does that make sense, you guys? If you, again, chastity is the great friend of love. I am not Debbie Downer. I am not here to kill your joy and ruin your life. I promise, I am a heck of a good time. I am fun. I want that for your life, right? I just wanna protect your heart and I want you to have a marriage if you're called to marry, to mar- to marry someone, like to just blow your expectations out of the water for what marriage can be. For the marriage I have, that I love. Like, I want that for you. I'm not here to kill your fun and your joy. Do you guys pr- say, say, Sarah? I don't hate you. Okay, good. Now I can sleep tonight. Thank you. Okay, we're good. Right? Okay. Last question. What do you want it to be? I don't know what the options are. Okay. Oh, we'll end with this one. Why don't girls want to date me? (laughs) Here's... Here's the thing. Uh, one, review uh, exhibit <laughs> B and C or whatever from the slides. But two is, uh, if you are not comfortable with yourself, right? If you, if you uh, and, and here's the thing, is like uh, everyone's uncomfortable with themselves to some extent, right? But you need to, to do some work on yourself and figure out who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, right? If, if if any person can come up to you and say something and it is gonna completely change the trajectory of how you dress, the way you act, who you talk with and what you do, you need to spend some time figuring out who you are, right? When you get your own self-identity and a little bit of confidence and your feet on the ground, understand who you are, what you stand for, what you want in life, and you are content with yourself, that is when you become profoundly attractive to other people and have the space in your life to be able to welcome somebody else into a relationship where you start growing. Yeah. I would also say, this sounds really... (laughs) Man speaks fire. You guys, high school is the greatest time. I mean, I know you hate, you you wanna like throw things at me right now, but like being single in high school and college, it's the greatest gift because God has carved out this time for you to figure out who you are, what you're made of, to work on these virtues, like to really grow closer to him to make phenomenal friendships, like phenomenal friendships that you're gonna build those relationships upon. Figure out who you are. Don't let the person that you either wanna date or you're dating dictate that like I did. Like that's something I wish I could go back and I lost so many years that I could have been growing in virtue by doing that, playing that game. I put this slide up here. Um, This is just something that's very dear to my heart. It says, oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Um, this is from the, Serena, or the Surrender Novena uh, by an amazing priest. But in my life, you guys, like I, like, I have the virtue sheets. Like, remember I showed you guys the virtues, like all the simple years, the simple list, like they're in my book, but we, made, we actually made sheets of them. We call it the virtue challenge. So what, what we do um, is you pick a different virtue every week. You write down three ways that you wanna grow in that virtue. You write down three ways you know that the devil's gonna stand in your way, the obstacles that may come your way. It may be the name of a person. And then you write down the most important part is who is your accountability partner or your accountability partners. We made them into laminated sheets. They're over in the bookstore. You can like highlight, you can circle and you get together with your squad or your crew or your brotherhood and you get together and you're like, this is what I'm working on. Hold me accountable. Kind of like we talked about last night, the three most amazing ingredients to a friendship are availability, vulnerability, and accountability. I mean, that's, I, I made, we made prints of this, we made stickers, we made all this stuff because I want you to walk out of here like with a toolbox of tools to go back into your life and fight. Like, you know, like we talked about this morning with the ladies, I'm sure the men talked about it, you know, too, is like, we're in a battle. Like, it is a battle. And I want you and your brotherhood and your crews to get together and strive for virtue and strive for holiness to be close to our Lord, yes? Like, we are so proud of you and so excited for you. And for all of you that are sitting there going, she, like my heart is a mess. Like that's what tonight's for. We're going to go before the Lord tonight and we are going to lay out before him. Yes. Yes. Go to confession, go to your people say like my heart. Right. And, and we're going to end with this. We are praying for you. We are praying for you. We are praying for you. We love you. Let's end in a glory be in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All glory be to the Father, Father and to and the, the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Joseph.
pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We love you. Go get them. Yes.